Well, how's that for a tribute to Destroy All Monsters? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Otaku, and welcome to Kaiju Masterclass 2. My name is Eric Hominick, and I'm a PhD candidate in literature at the University of California, San Diego, where one of my pre primary research interests is kaiju films, and in particular, kaiju film music. I'm also the webmaster of akuraifkube.org, the official English language website about the famous kaiju composer Akira Ifkube. This evening, I will also be serving as your master of ceremonies for this introduction to our very exciting virtual convention. Kaiju Masterclass brings together creators, researchers, and scholars of Japanese sci-fi, cinema, and television for three days of in-depth conversations and panels. During this event, you will learn about the history of the genre, the filmmaking process, the art of film scoring, unmade projects, and so much more. Our philosophy at Kaiju Masterclass is that the rich histories and expert craftsmanship behind Kaiju films and television deserve to be emphasized, explored, and promoted to the widest possible audience. It was this idea that led our team to produce the first Kaiju Masterclass online event, which took place in October of last year, 2020. Our virtual convention featured exclusive panel conversations with leading figures in the world of Kaiju filmmaking, including Shisuke Kaneko, Shinji Higuchi, Shinichi Wakasa, Michiru Oshima, Bear McCreary, Godzilla 1998 composer David Arnold, and many others. This year, the team at Kaiju Masterclass is indeed happy to return and assemble another outstanding list of panelists to delve even deeper into the fascinating world of Kaiju filmmaking. So, who exactly are the members of the Kaiju Masterclass team besides myself who are returning this year? Let's allow them to introduce themselves, starting with Kyle Bird. Kyle? Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Bird. I am a co-host of the Kaiju Transmissions podcast um, and uh, one of the members of the Kaiju Masterclass team. And uh, I'm really excited for uh, what we have this year. And um, I think everyone's going to get a kick out of it. And uh, I'm glad to be here. And thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for tuning in as well. Thank you, Kyle. How about you, John DeSantis? Uh, John DeSantis, composer, occasional conductor, purveyor of long gestating projects, um, a lover of Godzilla music, film music in general and sort of just kind of happy to be back here with this group of people and uh, just excited for what we have in store this weekend. And I hope everybody enjoys. Absolutely. Thank you so much, so much John. Patrick Galvin, let's hear from you. Hi, I'm Patrick Galvin. I am a film journalist. I have written about the genre of Kaiju Ega at a number of outlets, including sci-fi.com, tokingdom.com. I've also written for outlets such as uh, John Lee May's Lost Films fanzine, uh, offscreen.com and the, Br the British online magazine, Our Culture. Excellent. Thank you very much, Patrick. Kyle Gilmore, tell us about yourself. I'm a uh, filmmaker and um, I guess you kind of, I know how to draw, but that is, I wouldn't really consider myself an artist, but a, a videographer. I've done a lot of documentary work and stuff like that. And um, just really excited and happy to be back here with uh, with all you guys. And uh, it's going to be a fun convention this year. Some really cool guests. I'm looking forward to seeing these panels. So hope you are too. Thank you very much, Kyle. Matt Parmley, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh -oh. Oh, you're on mute, Matt. <laughs> on mute. Try this again, right? Uh, Zoom calls all over again. <laughs> Um, live, live, so hello, live, I live. am Matt Parmley. I am also co-host of the Kaiju Transmissions podcast and just super thrilled to be a part of Kaiju Masterclass again this year. Excellent. Thank you so very, very much. Steve Rifle, who the hell are you? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Eric. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in again this year. Uh, I'm Steve Rifle. I'm a journalist and a film journalist, and I've been writing about this genre of film for uh, more than 20 years, uh, both uh, working on projects by myself and along with uh, my colleague here at Gazischewski. And uh, we're together the authors of a book about the life and work of Ishiro Honda. And I'm really excited to be back this year uh, helping to produce uh, Kaiju Masterclass again. We have a really exciting 
lineup of guests and the conversations that we're going to be sharing are really, really interesting. And, and they go pretty deep into this creative process behind this genre. So welcome, everybody. It's going to be a great weekend. Thank you very much, Steve. So that's our returning group. This year, Kaiju Masterclass is very happy to include some new members to the organizational team. They are Matt Burkett, Ed and Mariko Gajicevsky, and Amanda Whalen. Let's get to know them a little bit better. Matt Burkett, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you bring to the Kaiju Masterclass team. What is going on, guys and gals? My name is Matt Burkett. I am the host, lead editor, and top maniac over at Monstrosities, a vlog of Tokusatsu. You can find that right here on YouTube. And uh, I was invited on this year, uh, incredibly honored to, to help out with video, to help out with social media, and uh, generally just crash the party. Um, I'm super excited to be here, and uh, there's a lot of really cool things in store for all of you. So thank you all for coming. You know, actually, Matt... The reason why Kaiju Masterclass exists in the first place is really in great part due to a video you I, produced. Can you talk Eric, about that? I just didn't want to brag, you know? <laughs> I just didn't want to take all the thunder. You, know? you got Steve Rifle here, Ed Gajicheski, Don John DeSantis. I didn't want to steal all the thunder. No, DeSantis. It's an E. I'm not <laughs> I am not related to the governor of Florida. <laughs> For the love of God. <laughs> but Matt, perhaps just take a minute or two to talk about that video that you created at your at your vlog that kind of got things started over here yeah without without getting uh like too into it um there was a video that was posted last year that was um kind of an editorial about the current state of uh of tokusatsu information out here in the west you know uh back in the early 2000s when we had things like gfan kaiju fan uh sci-fi japan.com you know guys like ed and steve and norman england uh, we're uh, writing all these great, wonderful things, but in this current day and age, we don't get a whole lot of that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of assumption that's made about that kind of thing. And uh, certain people in certain places like to put out, you know, false information and, and claim like, oh, yeah, this is legitimate. So the, the video was kind of, you know, saying, where are the people who are going to carry the torch uh, further, you know, uh, that are going to keep this information alive, they're going to discover new information. And uh, then suddenly this absolutely wonderful convention is born and all these wonderful minds came together and uh, brought uh, this, yeah, just created this wonderful environment. Well, thank you very much for, for asking the questions about, you know, where, where do we go from here in terms of Kaiju scholarship? It's from that question that I hope Kaiju Masterclass can provide a resounding answer. And here we are. So, yes, indeed, Matt Burkett, you do have... Quite a bit of you bear quite a bit of responsibility for this. Well, it's it's a great honor. <clears throat> well, we're we're very very happy to have you officially on the team this year. Also joining us this year are Ed and Mariko Gajcheski. Now, if you are a kaiju fan, kaiju film fan, the name Ed Gajcheski is no doubt familiar to you. But we're going to allow Ed to introduce himself and also speak on behalf of Mariko. Ed, welcome to Kaiju Masterclass. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm really happy to join the team this year. Last year, I really had so many uh, personal commitments that I wasn't able to devote much time to the Kaiju Masterclass. But this year, I'm really pleased to be able to have been invited to join the team. Um, I'm a writer and researcher on uh, Japanese film, specifically giant science fiction film, uh, co-author of the Ishiro Honda biography with my great friend, Steve Rifle. Uh, uh, also uh, editor and publisher of Japanese Giants Magazine and uh, have contributed uh, written articles to any number of publications, done some commentaries on DVDs with my friend Steve and produced a documentary film, uh, Bringing Godzilla Down to Size. Uh, what I'd like to, you know, one, one of the reasons I'm so excited to be part of the team here is that this is a, a great venue to uh, give some, uh, give out some information to uh, the, the general public and fans in particular about how, you know, our favorite wow. films have been made. Uh, I mean, I, I, I believe that, you know, this genre has been unfairly criticized over time uh, as being uh, films that are cheaply made and, and slapped together 
And if you do any kind of research on this subject, you find that that's far from the truth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great stories of individual people and, and their, their effort and imagination and creativity that, that need to be told. And this is a perfect venue to do it. Uh, sorry, there's no merchandise and everything for this convention. That's not what this is about. This is about learning about you know the ins and outs of, of our favorite films. And I, I really hope that uh, you know this weekend will be worthwhile for everyone who's going to be viewing. Uh, I, my wife, Mariko, is not uh, available right now to, to speak to you, but she's also uh, been a participant both last year and this year. She was uh, born and raised in Japan, moved to this country when she was 18. And uh, ironically enough, as one of the, the main translators for a Kaiju Masterclass, both in terms of uh, reaching out and uh, arranging things with uh, Japanese guests, uh, as well as doing translation of some of the interviews. Uh, ironically, uh, the, the subject she hated most when she was in school was English. And here she is many years later, uh, translating, uh, provide, you know, not only for Kaiju Masterclass, but also being an invaluable contributor to uh, a lot of the projects I've been uh, fortunate enough to work on over the years. She's, uh, you know, through and over the course of the, that time, she's uh, gotten to know this genre quite well, even though she may not be a fan. And uh, I'm really, you know, thrilled and, and honored that uh, she's been able to uh, help contribute to make this uh, this event a success. Well, excellent. I We're thrilled and honored to have both you and Mariko on the team. Both of you provide so much invaluable assistance and, and information very, very happy to have you. Thank you. Indeed. Indeed. Speaking of translators and interpreters, Mariko is not the only one. We have another translator and interpreter who has joined our team this year. And I am speaking, of course, about Amanda Whalen. Amanda, welcome to Kaiju Masterclass and please introduce yourself to our viewers. Hey, uh, I'm Amanda Whalen. I'm the second of the two interpreters helping out with uh, setting up interviews with guests and then the interviews themselves. Um, I guess I did, uh, I helped out with one interview last year. So this is my, my second time being involved in any capacity, but um, took on a little bit more this year. So that's been really exciting. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in Japanese from Washington University in St. Louis. Um, I lived in Japan for three years, uh, two of which was in Osaka, uh, working for a translation company. Um, let's see, I, I have the JLPT N1, the Japanese language proficiency test for people who care about that sort of thing. Um, I'm a little bit more experienced working as a Japanese to English translator than as an interpreter, but it's been a really great experience so far, um, helping out with these interviews and I'm really grateful for the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun and I hope to continue working on this and other projects in the future. Excellent, thank you, Amanda. Yeah, just like just like Mariko, we we're so happy to have very capable and talented interpreters and translators with us this year. So thank you very much for everything that you do. Now that I have acquainted all of you with our team, please allow me a moment to acquaint you with our Kaiju Masterclass website, which is your one-stop hub for information related to our online convention. KaijuMasterclass.com is where you can access, among other things, our list of this year's panelists and our schedule page, which not only tells you which panels will be taking place on which days at what times, but also provides direct links to our YouTube channel where you can access our streaming content. For example, tonight our first panel discussion is with the Godzilla suit actor Tsutomu Kitagawa, which will begin streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Pacific. To access this panel, simply go to our website schedule page and look under Friday, November 5th, 2021. Click on the Kitagawa YouTube link and you'll be taken directly to our YouTube channel where it will begin streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. This is how you will be able to easily access our streaming content the entire weekend. Speaking of our schedule and our list of panelists, let's talk a little bit about what Kaiju Masterclass has in store for you this weekend. To give you a taste of our exclusive lineup, 
Let's have our members introduce some of this year's special guests. Let's start with Steve. Steve, who do we have for the Kaiju Masterclass viewers this weekend? Well, uh, one guest that we're really excited about is uh, director Kazuki Omori. Uh, fans of this genre will know that name as the director of both Godzilla vs. Biollante, which is a film that really revitalized the Godzilla series uh, in 1989, bringing in uh, ideas about uh, international espionage and bioterrorism and, and a real more of a hard science fiction story. Uh, and then he also directed a film called Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah in 1991, which is a really uh, interesting entry in the series with time travel and all kinds of references to American movies uh, like Terminator and Back to the Future. The conversation is really interesting because it reveals his love of American movies, not just uh, American blockbuster type films from the 80s that are referenced in his films, but going back to his uh, education in cinema, he was a big fan of directors like uh, John Sturgis and John Frankenheimer in the 60s. Uh, he talks about his love for the film The Train with Burt Lancaster and uh, uh, The Magnificent Seven and all kinds of other films from that era that were sort of his education in cinema. So it's a really fascinating conversation. He goes into things like uh, the development of the story uh, for Godzilla vs. Biollante and, and reveals some details that I certainly didn't know before about how Miki, Miki Sagusa came to be exactly uh, how she is and, and other plot details. So I think that's a really fascinating conversation that people will, will really enjoy. And that's uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night, Saturday night, November 6th. Thank you very much, Steve, for that little taste of what to expect with Kaz Kazuki Omori. Cal Bird, tell us a little bit about someone else that is going to be very, very interesting to hear from this year. Sure. Um, another director uh, that we're super excited to have is uh, Ruhei Kitamura. Um, I think the he's most known the world over probably for uh, the 2000 action horror movie Versus, um, which has gone on to be a huge, huge cult film. Um, but, uh, you know, after Versus, he did some other movies uh, like Azumi uh, in, in Japan that was a big hit. That led him to making Godzilla Final Wars, uh, the 50th anniversary movie uh, for the Godzilla franchise, uh, the last in the millennium uh, era, the last one to use um, uh, tokusatsu effects <clears throat> um, for for you know the monsters and um, yeah, it's uh, it was great um, to to be able to get him. Um, uh, he's uh, still uh, an in demand director both uh in japan and in the united states um you know here he made um uh a lot he's made a lot of movies here, here since um the the clive barker uh adaptation midnight meat train uh with a uh, an early role from bradley cooper before he became a big star also uh, the wwe movie no one lives um uh, the suspense movie Downrange. Uh, he's worked with uh, Joe Dante and Mick Garris on a anthology called Nightmare Cinema. Um, in uh, in Japan, he made the live action Loop in the third movie. Um, but uh, yeah, I, say what anyone wants about Final Wars. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of really interesting insights. Um, and uh, as as someone that's made films in Hollywood and Japan, um, he's just another guy that. Seems like he has more stories than anyone has has time to hear. So, I mean, I'm super thrilled that we were able to get him this year. Uh, he was able to kind of clear the air on a lot of things that um, have kind of swirled around uh, Final Wars. And uh, it's a really interesting conversation. Thank you, Bird. Now, Matt Parmley, tell us a little bit about the very special guest that we have just after our opening remarks here, our very first guest tonight. Who's that going to be? So we're super, super excited to have uh, Tom Kitagawa, of course, the beloved stuntman, best known for portraying Godzilla in five uh, Toho Millennium films from 99 to 2004. We're going to talk through his suit acting career. Uh, we're also going to talk about his involvement in the various Super Sentai TV shows, including a brief mention uh, of the Japanese Spider-Man TV show. Uh, we'll cover his time working as King Ghidorah in Roberto Mothra 3. And uh, just really, really great interview. I think he gave a lot of interesting tidbits and, and his toy collection will make an appearance. I'm really excited to, to, to see what people think about what he does and how he explains the suit with the toy that he's using in demonstration, so. Excellent, thank you for that. Kyle Gilmore, speaking of suits, we have someone who is 
got a lot of experience making these suits that we, we love looking at so much. Can you tell us a little bit about our suit maker this, this year? Yeah, our uh, suit maker this year is Fuyuki Shinada, who is a sculptor and has built many monster suits, and some of them for uh, some of my most uh, favorite tokazatsu films, including uh, Godzilla vs. Biollante, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Gamera 2, Attack of Legion, Gamera 3, Revenge of Iris, and Godzilla Mothra and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. He's also made suits for numerous tokazatsu TV shows, so it's going to be a really interesting interview with uh, Mr. Shinade. Indeed, indeed. We are all looking forward to that very, very much. The 2001 Godzilla, the all-out attack Godzilla design, one of my favorite designs, absolutely. So I'm really looking forward to hearing to what he says about that. What our, one of our main musical guests this year is uh, someone very, very special, someone very, very special. And Patrick Galvin is going to tell you a little bit about that interview. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, um, our main uh, musical guest this year is somebody who was – who we really had no real idea of how to reach him. So we didn't really have any real personal connection to him. And then we all, we all thought it was kind of like a long shot, but we decided just to give it a shot, give it a try anyway, see if we could reach him. And much to our, much to our delight, he not only agreed to uh, be interviewed, but he was actually very enthusiastic about doing it. And that is the composer Reijiro Kodoku, who composed uh, the score for Godzilla 1984, AKA the return of Godzilla. And what's really exciting about this interview is that this will be, to our knowledge, his very first time talking about this score for an English language platform. Kuroku has, from our understanding, not given very many inter interviews in general. And again, as far as we know, this will be the very first time he's discussed this landmark, rightfully um, praised score for, his, for this Godzilla film for an English language platform. So yeah, I'm very excited to uh, share this interview with the audience to, uh, to t take it back to like 30 plus years ago when he scored Godzilla's 30th anniversary comeback in 1984. This will be a very fascinating interview, and I'm absolutely honored that he agreed to be interviewed by us, and I hope people enjoy it. Indeed. It is, as I have said before, an interview event 37 years in the making, and we're very, very proud and excited to have it here at Kaiju Masterclass, too. One of the things that we enjoy talking about here at Kaiju Masterclass is not just the Godzilla and Kaiju film projects that got produced, but also some of them that didn't quite quite make it into production and we have a very special guest this year who will be talking about a certain unmade Godzilla project. John, tell us a little bit about this guest. Uh, yes, uh, so William Stout, uh, he, he's an award-winning illustrator special, uh, specializing in paleo art, uh, worked on a number of films contributing posters, storyboards, um, production design, presentation art to titles like Raiders of the Lost Ark, First Blood, Invaders from Mars, and Men in Black. Um, he did some pretty extensive work on Steve Miner's unmade Godzilla King of the Monsters in 3D. And that film has sort of taken on a legendary, or that unmade film, rather, has taken on sort of a legendary status of its own. Um, it's been written about a lot of times, but I think for a lot of newer fans, kind of uh, sort of rediscovering what would have been, I believe, the first ever American Godzilla production uh, should make for a really, really good interview. Indeed. And here at Kaiju Masterclass, all aspects of Kaiju film production are what we're interested in. Everything from the top down, from the directing to the screenwriting to the musical compositions. But what about when the films make it over stateside or leave Japan and come to a foreign country and they need to be dubbed into another language? Well, what about English dubs? Well, we've got someone who's worked in that realm of English dubbing, voice acting. And Matt Briquette's going to tell us a little bit about this particular guest who has this particular area of expertise. Yeah, uh, expertise, very much so. 1,700 credits, and we are talking about Tiffany Grant, voice actress. Uh, she's worked many, many years in theater, commercials, and films. Um, as a voice actress, she's probably best known as uh, As Asuka from Neon Genesis Evangelion. And uh, this takes me back. She was also in the English dub of Shusuke Kaneko's Gamera Trilogy. She played the orthonologist, if I'm uh, remembering right there. She's also in Blue Seed, Infinite Stratos, Full Metal Alchemist, 
Uh, also, some video games, including Warframe, Neversong, Brawl Stars, Paladin, Smite, Deuce X2, Invisible War. She's written ADR script adaptations, including Infinite Stratos, Parasite the Maximum, and subtitled projects like the live-action Tokyo, The Last Megalopolis. So, uh, yeah, super exciting that uh, we got her on board. Should be a really good interview. That's going to be happening on Sunday, I believe. Indeed, and Tiffany Grant is not the only actress that we have joining us this year at Kaiju Masterclass. We have an actress from a film that you no doubt have all seen, but maybe don't know that much about because it doesn't always get quite as much attention as some of the, the, the Godzilla films, although it was produced by, by the same studio, Toho. Uh, Ed, could you tell us a little bit about this very special actress that we are going to be talking to, speaking about her entire career, as well as that one film she did for Toho. Ed, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I clicked it. Okay. Leading off the schedule for uh, Saturday morning is a live interview that we'll be conducting with Linda Haynes. She's an actress who co-starred in the Shiro Honda's science fiction extravaganza Latitude Zero uh, from 1969. She did this at the age of 21. And at that time, she got to appear alongside some, you know, Hollywood legends, Cesar Romero, Joseph Cotton. Uh, she's also with Richard Jekyll and Akira Takarada. And she'll be telling us anecdotes about Latitude Zero and dis you know, discussing how this experience working on this uh, star-studded but very troubled production uh, paved the way for her acting career. And that career includes uh, appearances in uh, cult classics such as Coffee, uh, The Nickel Ride, and Rolling Thunder. And she's also in the neo-noir film The Drowning Pool with Paul Newman. Uh, it's uh, going to be a very interesting discussion with Linda. I you know, hope you can join that tomorrow morning. Great, thank you very much, Ed. So as exciting as all of that is, that is only a small sampling of the entire lineup that we have in store for you over this weekend. So for a complete list of guests, which includes their biographies, do check out the guests page at kaijumasterclass.com. And while you're on our website, don't forget to check out our merchandise page at kaijumasterclass.com. In order to browse and perhaps get your hands on some of our signature swag, which includes everything from apparel, including t-shirts like this. Yes, you too can have a Kaiju Masterclass t-shirt. We have everything from Kaiju Masterclass t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, to coffee mugs, magnets, you name it. There's probably something out there that has our name and insignia on it. So please do check out our merchandise page. Also on our website, we ask you very kindly to please take a look at our support page should you want to generously donate to our convention. Kaiju Masterclass is a grassroots event entirely staffed by volunteers and created as a free event for the online genre film fan community. Your support helps us continue to provide in-depth, exclusive content focusing on the unique world of Japanese science fiction and fantasy films. If you enjoy what we do, this is beginning to sound like a PBS pledge drive here, but if you enjoy what we do and you want to enjoy more of this great content in the future, please do consider going to our support page at kaijumasterclass.com and donating some money. It really does help us continue to provide this great information that we can gather and present to you. And now, everybody, it is time for Kaiju Masterclass to get underway and to kick off our online convention with our first panel, Godzilla suit actor Tsutomu Kitagawa, interviewed by Kyle Bird and Matt Parmley with Amanda Whalen serving as the interpreter. Again, the interview can be accessed from the schedule page at our website, kaijumasterclass.com, and it will begin streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is, of course, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So be sure to go to our website, go to the schedule page, look for the Tom Kitagawa interview, click on the link, and it'll take you right to our YouTube page, and you'll be able to watch it as it begins streaming. So go ahead. Please enjoy this panel, and indeed the rest of the great content we have in store for you all weekend. 
On behalf of the entire team here at Kaiju Masterclass, thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you for your support of this very special online event. Kaiju Masterclass is now in session. Prepare yourselves to hear from Godzilla himself, Somu Kitagawa. And again, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the Kitagawa panel and throughout the weekend. Good night. <laughs>